Hello, welcome to the Square Base Show with your host, Robert Val. And in this exciting show, we are going to bring all of the nations of the earth together. Together. Unite. 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 That's right. We're announcing the United Nations of the Old World. Uh, it's actually mm-hmm. quite hard. Peacekeeping is very difficult, especially around the Orcs and Goblins area because they keep throwing fanatics at us. It's a actually, tough time. We just bought the actual United Nations and we're just going to turn it into a Warhammer Club. Uh, <laughs> it was super cheap. I was impressed uh, how uh, you know Patreon money went real far at the UN. <laughs> Maybe they should start a Patreon. Yeah. An- <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to it. Is Sepp Blapper or whatever his name? Is he in charge? <laughs> oh, that- man. I used to know this. I don't even know the Secretary General anymore. That's that's sadness. Okay. That's a sad moment. Oh, so hello everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh today's a pretty exciting show because we're going to announce the plans at least. Uh so this is a hype show. Uh the plans at least for an event that me and Val would like to run next year, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we're going to kind of go through some of the details and we're going to give you the opportunity in the comments below to sign up and be part of our gang. Uh, which is super exciting. Uh, so, should I dive straight in? Should I dive straight in? Do you want to let well, everyone know how you are? Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. Well, how are you, Rob? Oh, I'm good. How are, how, how well, are, thi- how are things? Mm, I'm. This is a time of recording because uh, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure about like release schedule, but a time right. of recording, uh, I am in the middle of painting 102 feet worth of rivers. 102 feet? That's been some river inflation. Yeah, no, 96 plus 12. No, 108 feet of river. Jeez Louise. Yeah, 108 feet of river. Um, Because we have this weekend coming, uh, so Mm -hmm. we're calling this on Wednesday, uh, we have the the Riverlands event. Although technically, technically the Canal Lands event doesn't quite catch as much because the river isn't Mm -hmm. natural, Val. No green knight coming Ah. out of that river. Slash, nope. slash canal, mm-hmm. yeah. man-made um, or 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 uh, creature-made uh, feature. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Unnatural. Uh, unnervingly unnatural. Unnervingly unnatural. And I will be making a video. I'm going to do a list review show, an event review video, which I've done for the last event uh, for those. So they might actually end up coming out before this video comes out. Uh, so like that's fine, but uh, yeah. So I'm okay. I'm just like staring down the sides. So the longest part time t- it took to spray them. That was the bit that took the longest. I think the dry brushing is going to be fine. It's because you got that strong dry brush in hand. Been working it for mm. years. Just yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I should get myself one of them. Actually, why has no one done this? You know, like a like a lathe. You know, when it like spins around. So what if I just like got it spinning, added no, a sh- bit of pain. Stop talking. Stop talking. This stop is talking. genius. Stop talking. The, the Chinese will have one built by tomorrow. We gotta. We, we need to have. Stay fast. We're, we need to get. We need to. We need to make money off of this. Dozens of dollars. Or a dry brushing machine. That is a brilliant concept. Thank you. Oh, what about? Okay. Well, let's make it a little bit easier. Get yourself a Dremel. Of, get yourself yeah. a little. No, stop it! No, 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 no. You can only use the proprietary square based <laughs> dry brush machine. I'm excited. That, that is a very, very slick idea, Rob. I am genuinely excited. Tom? Tom? Mm. Uh, it's I cracking. Think, I think the smartest thing would be to call it the slap chopping machine, but. The slap chopper 3000? Yeah. <laughs> XL. <laughs> XL. Yeah. XL. Extreme. No, or that's turbo. The that's 2.0. Turbo. turbo. No, that, we got to leave ourselves room to grow in the future. <laughs> we'll change the color and call it turbo. Turbo. Uh, yeah, so I've got that, uh, and that's fine, and I'm really excited. Good event. I've just done an event, another event coming. Super excited about it. Uh, loads of rivers. Um, I did just make an FAQ today. Uh, everyone pointed out to me, they were like, Rob, low linear obstacle the whole way. Chariot can't cross it. And I was like, that sounds dumb. A chariot can cross this. That sounds fine. So it's going to be a very vibe-based event with people asking me uh-huh. a lot of questions. Like, Rob, what happens on this river? I'm like, come on, man, work it out. You got this. <laughs> Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a Luckily, lot. old world is a vibes is vibes based world, baby. <laughs> but not that's that. Uh, oh, gone. I was gonna say, but not no, what we're talking about today. Too serious. Way serious. Way serious. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about a different kind of world. What about you? Uh, how's Spot gone? Going okay. Spot two. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup uh, pairing the second round of the regionals and the finals. However, they did get going and uh, got some great support from new recruits. So I was really, really pleased about that. 
but yeah, we're we're humming along um, again, just getting massive support uh, from from the, both the, the players, obviously, but also um, some of the the folks in in the uh, in the Discord itself who've been really taking point. Although I have returned, I have returned, and I have been uh, actually participating and helping in running my own online event. So that's a big step for me, which is great because we're not in a tough quarter anymore. We're into the new quarter, what, and that's new, fantastic. Fresh quarter. Um, uh, with that said, uh, we recently hosted the Square-based uh, annual general meeting, the AGM. Indeed we did. Indeed we did. And so expect a lot of projects coming out of us, uh, coming out of us, from us, with us. Expect to join us on some projects. Don't come mm -hmm. at us. I don't want that. Uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, <laughs> and the, weeks. And the one that we'd like to announce is yes. next year, me and Val would like to organize... Um, would like would like to will be sorry mm -hmm. will be organizing the uh, old world world championships the old world world championships <laughs> uh, oh. oh my I god a, I, I gotta get a different celebratory sound effect because that one's getting played out but I am uh, really really happy for you Rob because this is this is this is something that you've been percolating on for a long time can I show the logo not Yes. This is this is this is so, I've been working on this so long that we already have a logo uh and the logo's already wrong. Uh yeah. because uh we're going to talk about the format and what the plan is uh over this video. That's the goal. Uh the goal is uh that's what we're going to be talking about. And then basically we want to bring you the viewers and also the people around the world to uh get involved and also talk to us about it uh, because obviously we're super excited about this as a project. It's something we've all we've actually always stated is something we're going to do over the past year, right? Yeah. Well, we've. I mean, you've strongly hinted at it. People have uh, picked up the banner a number of times. I still get frequent messages about when this will start being organized, and the answer is today, Robert. The answer is today. But we can only do it with the begins. people listening. We can only do it with everyone else and anyone who they tell uh, as well. Um, uh, true. But yes. Uh, so, Rob, where does it where does it go from here? What do you, what what is some of the grand vision that uh, that that you have for the old world world championships taking place in twenty twenty five? Twenty twenty five. Okay. So, um, there's a, been a long tradition of uh, international team tournaments. Uh, sometimes they're called the ETC. Sometimes called the WTC. Sometimes called AOS World. Sometimes called the Blood Bowl Regional Cup. Sometimes called the Euro Bowl. That's a, a fun one. Uh, so, like, generally, like the Euro Bowl is a thing. That's definitely what, a what thing. Is, what's the Euro Bowl? It's Blood Bowl, but in but in Europe, ah, but everyone ah. from all over the world can go. Uh, oh, okay, that sounds good. That's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty good and very popular. Very popular. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Which is which is a good little thing actually, because because uh, Euro Bowl does something I really like. Uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, there's a long been a long tradition of people organizing team events for people from different nations to play at. And obviously we would like to help organize the one for our community, which is the old world community. I feel like you and me are really lucky. I also I obviously run constant amounts of events. So I feel like I've picked up a lot of like uh, skills to do this as well as already being involved in um, uh, the HC World World Championships the past several mm -hmm. years. Uh, you know, I've also like liaised and consulted on the 40K World Championships at one point. So like there's a lot of like, I have a lot of like background in history, at, at least in this section, uh, which is good. And also- the Super uh, Series? Super Series. I also did the Super Series. That's also true. Uh, so like there's a lot of stuff, uh, like uh, like a lot of experience I can bring to the table. You obviously also uh, have been running events in Canada as well as SBOT. Uh, and I think that that's put both of us in a good position to be able to reach enough people to build up critical mass of making mm -hmm. this be a really big international celebration, I think is the right way to describe it. A big celebration. Ce <laughs> a celebration of the old world. I know that's a bit silly, but I do think sometimes that's the right way to describe it, right? It's a celebration of the game that we all love. Yes. And I mean, most, I mean, any event you go to is is also about like, you know, getting the chance to be with other folks who are super into this very specific thing that you're super into. And what better way to make friends than to bring some friends to make friends with. And that's why I think Teams is particularly awesome. You have a sort of uh, a, a, a group uh, dynamic that is unmatched by singles, even though singles is super fun and maybe even might be an element involved at this event. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And I know 
I, I have loved, you know, in the past going to team events. There's a team event in Canada coming up uh, in the spring. Um, so uh, I'm excited for that for Old World. And uh, now I'm even more excited for what this might bring us. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, the Old World World Championships, like the idea of getting everyone together uh, to play is really good. Um, and I think there's uh, some like structural changes I'd like to see uh, based on my experiences of other events, which I think so, have been a little bit negative. Yeah, so like when 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 you say World Championships, like uh, and especially the formats and styles of of those other team events that are sort of country specific, what are some of the what are some of the the traps that maybe we that maybe we feel they've gotten into that make them not so great? Uh, I think one of the one of the major traps that I've seen uh, at big international events is that the uh, and some of this has been slowly starting to erode in some cases, but not all the time. Um, is that they can sometimes be referred to as old boys clubs. The concept here is that, like you know, let's say you pick Portugal. I'm really in touch with the the organising committee in Portugal this week. So that's why it's on in my mind. Uh, who yeah. are, who are doing uh, AOS so events? Let's shit all over them. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck you Pedro um, uh, I love Pedro he's great but like so Pedro obviously wants to organise like a Portuguese team to go to the world championships right well that's great and Pedro's a really good guy and he's really like motivated and therefore everything is orientated around him the problem there is that, you know, in 10, 15 years, if they have an incredibly huge community, there's nothing to stop. Pedro's a super nice guy, so it feels a bit bad to throw him under the bus here, but like, there's nothing to stop him constantly being the person picking the people because there's no, there's no, there's no organizing body. There's no structure to it. You know, Portugal's also really small. When you start to expand that out to something like the US, as an example, someone in the US might just be like, I'm the organizer for this. And you're like, okay, cool. But you're on like, you know, you're in the Northeast. What about everyone in like the Pacific Northwest? What about Texas? Texas is just bigger than the Australia, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, what, what you're getting at is, is uh, certainly with ETC and WTC styles is they send one team per country. Yes. And the, the, what, what has happened because these, these things have evolved from very, you know, humble beginnings. Uh, where, you know, it was whoever was interested when that team tournament kicked off, got the rights somehow uh, to create that that U.S. team or that... They just decided uh, that, is that that's, UK team, that's how, yeah. Right? And, and the way that it shook out is that they then have that right to organize the team in perpetuity. Mm. And so, um, and because we're not advanced enough as a gaming community, unlike Rubik's Cubes, um, there is no actual organizing body that would set standards or rules for, uh, you know, like national levels. So each nation uh, is left to figure out what's fair for deciding a team. And um, and by that, we mean uh, whoever happened to put their hand up first from that country 20 years ago has the uh, the the forever hereditary right to <laughs> to make the team or as some countries have started doing, create you know an actual you know institution that you know picks and selects the teams, and we've seen that evolve a little bit. And we got in fairness to, to those countries, but nonetheless, it does create what you just what you what you let into this with. Mm -hmm. So what? How do you want to prevent that sort of old boys club from 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 happening? Also, I'd just like to point out Team England for H Super. Uh, two years ago, didn't win an event. And so they hired a new captain and the new captain then they had had, they had, they've been criticized a lot in the local community for, for how they pick people and those sorts of things. So they were like, we've made a charter. Everyone can see the charter. The charter is in. So then they elected a new team captain the year after they lost. And then the new team captain was like, I'm not following the charter and just ripped up the charter. Like not physically and in person, but like, you know, uh, so the concept is instead of being, uh, cause normally it's eight people teams, from like one eight person team from England or the US. Instead, we're going to do five people teams and we're going to do, you can have as many as you like. Now, sure, if you've got 200 American teams, they're likely to win the event, right? But, that doesn't mean they're definitely going to win the event. I also think it's easier for organizing. I think it's uh, I think it's much uh, much more uh, likely that you're likely to get more players attending. And it also means it also means that you do not have like people shut out of the process. You can go to another country, represent your country, work out how international gaming is played, 
and then be, you know, you'll go back to your country and be like, right, okay, these are the lessons we've learned. And I think it gets more people more involved more quickly. And ultimately, mm -hmm. like, closing the door on people to play is the antithesis of who I am and what we do, you Absolutely. and me. We want people oh, to go man. out and play, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was in a... We're, we're trying to find a new school for my kiddo, and there was a sign on the wall that said, uh, you can't say you can't play. And I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> inclusion to me is is super, super duper important. And I think at an international event, um, you know, you want to encourage as many different, um, you know, elements of different countries to show up. Because as you pointed out, you know, whether it's, you know, Canada or the United States or whatever, like these are, this is a physical game. And, you know, like ultimately gaming groups are going to be regional and you want to be able to get representation from all across the places that Warhammer is played. And yeah, I, I think, you know, there's lots of examples out there. I mean, you could look at like something um, like, I don't know, F1, where, you know, most teams in F1, so car racing, uh, I think there's 20 teams on that, that, that are represented in F1 uh, and about half of them are owned by the other 10 teams. Yes. So, you know, they, they all have, they all have, you know, a subsidiary team within the, the competition itself. So it's not wildly unusual. Um, and uh, also I think just, you know, gives a lot of people the opportunity to, to come out, represent and take part in an amazing team event. Yeah. Also, uh, it's also how they run it in uh, middle earth strategy battle games. Uh, it's also how they do it in MCP as well, their international events. Uh, and it seems to work really well there as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know that, um, uh, like, uh, that some of the, uh, I think one of the Blood Bowl events, you can, there's just multiple different, like, coaches and stuff and teams. Uh, but, like, the, the, the goal is to get as many people to be able to play as possible, represent their nation, uh, and feel like that they're doing a good job, and then, uh, you know, work it out from there. And there's some other problems also with the national uh, thing as well. So, so one of the things that we see a lot in international play is sometimes you have mercenaries. So like you'll have four people from a nation and then sometimes they'll just have four ringers from another nation that just like improve. <laughs> yeah. And some some nation, like some of the, like, I don't know, I think in 40K it's up to four, but I think in, I don't know if that's true. So if I'm, I'm wrong, please, please, uh, you know, challenge me below but in uh, AOS I think it's at least two uh, that you mm. can have because it's eight person teams right and they're like oh it's really difficult for us to get eight people from our country and I'm like cool well we'll make it five uh, and maybe there'll be some sort of exception maybe one person out of five can be like your international ringer or something uh, or whatever that case may be um, and I do understand that like you know this potential to create like super teams and other stuff but that's fine because someone is going to win the event the important part is not to block people out from being able to play. That is, mm -hmm. the, to me, the worst thing that we can do and the worst thing that sometimes the international things to do. And sometimes, like, you know, I think the other criticism of the process might be, well, how do we know it's going to be the best players playing the best players? And I'm like, you don't. You don't know it's going to be the best players playing the best players. But it's already not the best players playing the best players. It's the players with the most money playing the other, like, you know, a team events a lot, maybe a week off, uh, travel to another country, potentially, stay in a hotel, it's a lot of cash. And this is how uh, your co-host played for Team Canada. I could afford the plane <laughs> ticket to go. Uh, and, uh, well, How anyway. did you do? Uh, not well. <laughs> not well, Rob. And, uh, yeah. I think that also, I think, I mean, just that alone, too, I think when you look at the international events, um, especially when you get to higher levels of play, um, it becomes uh, it becomes tough because, you know, to have that experience at that top end is only gotten by being there, right? So, like, to have a way to actually earn that or, like, gain that experience and earn that experience, I'm sure as this event continues on over years, you will see, you will see national teams coalesce um, and um, and there's nothing I would say in this format preventing a national group from organizing an A, B, C, and D team. You know, there's absolutely like if you want if you're in it to win it for your country, there's no reason why uh, you couldn't do that. It's just that you also don't have to exclude um, the players who didn't make the top cut in your opinion, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. So like I think there's there's still room and there's nothing stopping uh, you know Quebec from showing up. Um, as uh, you know, to 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 represent uh, their 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 region or whatever, or um, you know the Basques 
Um, you know, like there's, there's nothing stopping, um, you know, people who aren't necessarily recognized by FIFA, let alone <laughs> the United Nations, um, from, from showing up and, and feeling like they can be, uh, you know, they, they can, you know, fly the flag they want to fly. So I think that's pretty cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. Like, but we, I want to be clear with everyone. Um, it, this is a humongous undertaking that we're going to try and go for. Uh, this is, this is going to be big. Uh, so the thing that we need from everyone else is we need you to know that you you want to be a part of it, right? Like, so uh, in the comments below is like a sign up form uh, for you to let us know and register your interest. The plan is to hold it in England, and the plan is also to hold it in Nottingham, most likely. Nottingham. Uh, and the simple reason is is it also gives you a reason to come here. You also get to go to Warhammer World. It's got it's a two hour train straight from London from Heathrow or a coach uh, can come straight here as well there's also an airport nearby we have East Midlands International Airport so it's located there we haven't as of yet definitely uh, decided on a venue but that's because right now we're not 100% certain how many people we necessarily can be getting because it's the first type one of its kind that's ever been mm -hmm. done so you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh you know pie in the sky kind of like conversations to be had and um uh, you know and, and also loads of other stuff as well we're gonna have to get enough terrain we're gonna have to get enough mats we're gonna have to get you know uh coaches not coaches uh refs and a bunch of other stuff uh but thankfully yeah. being in nottingham there's some resources i can bring to that process to help out and maybe in the future yeah. we'll run it in other countries who knows um, who knows? Know, who knows? The current 40k and AOS one that's happening next year is happening in a mountain town in Austria, three hours away from an airport in a town with only two restaurants. Uh, so yeah, that's the goal. Uh, Val, you've been to international tournaments. Like, what's your kind of like, uh, what are your feelings and thoughts about them? Um, what are my feelings and thoughts about them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a reason why they they coalesce into into something that becomes quite. Um, insular and fanatical because they're awesome. <laughs> you know, people really want to be able to go. They want to be able to, you know, see like, especially when it's, uh, you know, really planning the flag to be an international event that becomes the place you get to see those people. You know what I mean? Like it, it becomes a place where, you know, you can go and, you know, run into your pals from Australia or, um, or, you know, places in Europe or anywhere in the world. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that creates a really cool vibe on its own. And it's also just the team aspect of it. Um, you know, going to another place far from home to, you know, to to play Warhammer with a group of people that you know and have practiced with and have prepared with, and you're, you know, laying your cards down to see if, you know, you guess the meta right. And then you got to do it on the table. It's all just very exciting. And, you know, win or lose, you've got those people around you to support you. So uh, I think the, the the team aspect, whether or not it's, you know, like in your local town or city, um, is awesome, period, full stop. Play team events, organize team events. They're awesome. But when you add that international quality... It's very, very cool. Yeah. I, and you get to meet people from all around the world as well. Like, that's one of the great things about Spot is you've got to communicate and connect with all of the people who you, um, you know, from around the world in the different time zones. And I know for a fact, you've said that you've connected people in your local area by through those international things, which I think is yeah. fun as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to be fun. It's super interesting as a project. This is like day one. This is the announcement of us planning to plan. Uh, mm -hmm. so like, you know, let us know what you think and sure, like the format conversation is going to be one of those things where people are going to be like, you know, why isn't it eight and, uh, why isn't it these other things? And I think that's a really fair point. Um, the simple answer is, is with our experience, I personally think that this is a much better experience for the whole community versus a very specific section of the community. Like it's the mm -hmm. same it's the same way like um you know like in some events you see that the the top 5 tables have the nicer terrain and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> That's a little TO bias. I definitely did that at SBOTO. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're like come on. Uh you know, well this where you're, you're usually closer to them and all that. But yeah, like <laughs> I mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, um, but yeah, I think it is. It is. Uh, it does allow for more of an open style event. And let's not let, let's be clear too that like at those you know more traditional FIFA derived um, country events, uh, they're still arbitrary um, in the sense that you know the United Kingdom is represented by five teams. Yeah, 
Oh, um, oh my god, this was such an issue. Four well, teams? Uh, yeah, I guess five. four teams. It's Northern Ireland. Five? Well, okay. no, United Kingdom, like uh, Republic of Ireland, uh, is is represented not, by no, United Kingdom. Would not yeah. be, we're not Republic of Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Yeah, would no, be part I'm of saying, the UK. I'm asking if there were. Yeah, I know. I was just discussing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to all my friends yeah. in the chat. Shout out. Um, but uh, but yeah, so like, but they're not actual. You know, they're not independent countries. Uh, but they would be very analogous to individual states, provinces, and other regions in the world, and yet they are get because FIFA recognizes them as separate. Um, they are they are separate in these other these other events, um, and then also like other other countries that may not have massive playing groups, um, you know, are a way to uh, you know if you have some way to claim lineage to them, um, you know, that's a way to get you know I wouldn't say like random team is harsh, but you know. For the what team like uh, I know when I was at the ATC the Croatian team was essentially Italian you know what I mean so mm. like ultimately <laughs> unless you know you're you're checking you know we're, we're not going to be uh, birthers here we're not going to be checking uh, <laughs> passport <laughs> is not that's not what it's about man <laughs> uh, you know you can claim you can claim the flag you want to claim and, I mean if uh, I walk past the French and, team your best. if I walk past the French team I'm like bonjour and they're like guten tag I'm like you mother what the... <laughs> But but no, you're right. That's just such a good point to point out. Like uh, I kind of glossed over it a little bit. I didn't make it uh, quite as clear. But America, I'm really in connection with the American Age Sigmar team. They do a really good job of trying to coalesce everyone together where they can. But ultimately, they just held their kind of uh, intra-country. So like they're, they're you know, not quite state-based. Um, uh, national? N- national tournament. They run like a kind of national tournament. But they broke the country up into like eight pieces. Um, mm-hmm. And then... Uh, you know, but ca- like the the Texas team, or like are you know so removed from some of the other teams, it's, and they could potentially have like tons of 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 teams, maybe. And the same with Australia, like Western Australia, Eastern Australia, basically just different fucking places in the world. Like mm. you know, so you're right. Like it is incredible. Like the lines on the map are fairly arbitrary, like, and they are. And so we're trying to be more bassed, and we're trying to say. Maybe the lines on the map don't matter for the old world guys. And maybe we could all just girls and MBs. Maybe we could just be good people and everyone could get together in one big tent and celebrate, yeah. which would be good. I'm so excited. Like, I am really excited. I really understand the depth, the sheer volume of work, which is a torturous situation. But I'm very excited yeah. about how it could play out. Well, this is this is definitely like this is this is a dream uh, in action, and uh, I think what what uh, what I'll enter in here is we want to hear from you guys. Yes. So down down below in the description and in the comments, you'll have a link to a Google uh, form, uh, essentially a survey to see to gauge interest, uh, to see uh, what countries might want to be involved, uh, to see what you'd be you know able to to offer from from an organ. Basically, just to take a survey, a census of of interest and who might be, you know, really willing to show up for this. Um, again, shooting for summer 2025 in Nottingham. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. I'm very excited. Very excited. Let us know what you think. Um, and again, we're trying to be really open. So if you would like to be like, oh, I could be, uh, I could be interested to help as a TO or a judge or uh, Rob, for some reason, I've got a deeply weird passion to paint just so many trees, just so many trees. Like I was like 2025, I didn't really have any plans, but I was like, yeah, 400 trees. That's what I'm after, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, if you got 100 feet of river to work through, like why not? Why not just keep it rolling? <laughs> yeah, just gonna keep, well, now we've invented the the dry brushing machine. It's doing itself. We, yes, we have, and we <laughs> the patent. I've already mailed the patent patent envelope off. <laughs> okay, well, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for listening. I'm really excited. Also, Val will be there. So if there's no other reason. The, your man, our man, Mr. Heffelfinger will be there uh, in the media role. Media role? <laughs> don't, don't sign me up for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks don't for you, listening. Don't put that voodoo on me. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.